Um, <clears throat> well, first of all, my throat is a bit fucked up. Uh, so I, my voice is going away, so I hope it's going to go okay for an hour. And after that, I don't speak anymore the rest of the day. Um, anyway, so who knows about regular expressions? Like vaguely. Okay, cool, everyone. Um, who is like pretty good? Who would consider themselves pretty good? Okay, we lost <laughs> most everyone. <laughs> so experts, self-proclaimed experts, two. Just because they don't know that nobody else behind them is raising their hands. So they don't have the social pressure, okay. <laughs> okay, cool. Uh, well, I, I hope then everyone will learn something. Uh, maybe not you too, I don't know. Hopefully you still learn something, but... Uh, <coughs> I mean... Um, also, I will do it in English, as you might hear. Uh, <laughs> just because there are a few people that don't speak French, and I told them I would do it in English. And also I have to speak very fast because it's only 45 minutes, and. I did the talk in 55 minutes last time, so it will have to be a little bit compressed, um, which means that yeah, it's easier for me to do it in English because like, if you were here last time and you saw me talk in French, it was a bit of a disaster. I always look for my words and it's, it's not easy, so this will be better. Thank you. Well, yeah, I think we can start. So that's the last talk. <laughs> Uh, in this room uh, for, this, <coughs> for this afternoon. So thank you, Jordi, for coming. And so you have 45 minutes, no more. Let's start then. Okay, so just quickly about me. I'm doing composer and stuff and symphony and like a bunch of open source. Um, I'm also working at teamup.com right now. I've been there for a year, so if you're interested, just go look at that. <coughs> Sorry, I'm gonna cough a lot as well. <laughs> so, regex concepts. Um, throughout the presentation, I will go th with those colors explaining everything. Uh, so, you have the patterns in yellow, the, the subject strings. So, the patterns are like the, the regex itself, right? Um, Subject strings are just what you apply it on, and then the, the matches is what comes out of the engine. <coughs> okay, it's not going well so far. <laughs> um, so, patterns, they're made of characters, like regular characters and meta characters, which have special meaning. Um, then, if you want to escape those, so like the dot, for example, has special meaning, I guess you all know that. If you want to escape it, you put a backslash in front. Everyone knows that as well, I guess. Uh, but there's another way as well with this uh, backslash Q and backslash E. This like quotes everything between the, the, the quote and end quote. So this is a way to just escape everything at once if you ever need that. It's a bit more readable than having like 15 backslashes everywhere. Um, and we have character classes. So those let you just express that, like, for example, this one here says it should be one letter between A, B, C, and D. So that just matches that one letter. <coughs> then we can do ranges as well. Uh, so from A to D, that's exactly the same, right? This one is equivalent to this. Um, and then you can have, like, ranges that are bigger, but the problem is like you have to watch out because the ranges are not smart, like they don't understand intents, they're just code points. So in this case, uh, we just match like anything between the capital A and it goes and you have the full alphabet and all is well, but then in the in the ASCII table or like, you know, in the low range of characters, you have a bunch of stuff here between the, the uppercase alphabet and the lowercase alphabet. So. In this case, you match a bunch of things you probably don't want to, so watch out, like, don't do things like this. Um, you can also negate them, so with the, the correct, um, adding the correct in front just uh, negates the, the class, so it just says anything that is not between A and Z and uh, all the space. And then again, escaping inside the classes, you have to escape the, the few characters that have special meaning, but 
you don't have to escape everything. Like a dot, for example, in the character class has no special meaning. So it just means dot, so you don't have to escape it. <coughs> so those are the, the four characters you kind of have to escape. <coughs> um, so you can use that for interesting things, right? Like removing all the, all the control characters, like the non-printable stuff. That's an easy way. Uh, with the backslash x, you, you do a hexadecimal like um, code points. We define the, the code point with the number and not the not the character. You can also do it with Unicode. So in this case, uh, this just represents the small dot there, and this one is the big dot or the big circle. Um, and you can also you know replace them with the characters. This is completely equivalent. And it looks cooler, I think, but it's a detail. Um, but then, yeah, the, the writing these character classes tends to be quite cumbersome. You have a lot of characters to add and so on. So there are a few shortcuts that just like really they, they map one to one to the to the character classes here. So the backslash W is world characters. Um, then you have like digits with D, uh, S for white space. And all of them have this uh, capital version that means anything but that. So that's just the opposite. Uh, and then you have a bunch of them for Unicode, like really hundreds of them for Unicode character classes. So if you want, for example, all the Latin characters, including accents and so on, not just A to Z, you can find like you can find a character class to do that. If you want to match all the, the Thai characters, for example, I don't know why, but maybe, um, you can also do that and then just like, if you really don't want any Thai to appear in your stuff, you can just remove all the Thai characters. Um, so these are very powerful, like they, they match uh, a lot of things. You have to watch out though with the, the Latin characters, there's like thousands of characters are included in that, it's not just a few accented letters, it's, it's quite a lot. So. Yeah, just be careful. <coughs> uh, the dot, as you probably know, it just means anything. But by default, it means anything except a new line. Uh, and then you have the, the S modifier that lets you express dot meaning anything for real. Um, this is interesting to, to represent it like that, I think, because in JavaScript, for example, you don't have the S modifier. So, you, so in JavaScript, if you want to match anything, absolutely anything, you need the, you need to express it with the, the expanded form and saying, okay, like in this case, it just means anything that's a space or like a white space or not a white space, which kind of includes everything. Um, then we have sub patterns. So sub patterns are just the parentheses. They they create a group. Um, and they let you do alternations as well, right? So with the pipe, you, you create an alternation, you say, okay, with here we have always B, O, and then followed by M, B, O, uh, Y, S, and so that matches bomb or boys. Um, one interesting thing you can do that I don't see many people doing is to name the sub patterns. So with this, uh, this question mark P here, then you have this, like, it's a lot of characters, it's, it's not extremely nice syntax, but anyway. Um, so you, you, you name this group and you say that this, this parenthesis, instead of being the, the parenthesis, like the sub-pattern one, it's the sub-pattern first. So now it has a name. And if you do a preg match, you see that in the, in the match array, you will get like first and last as, uh, as having like the, the sub-pattern matches. So by default, you would just get like one and two, right? Um, and there you also get like those name aliases. I think like this is good for readability because when you read your code, like if you have a, a lot of matches and you have then code using all those matches, like this is quite clear that you, you use the first and the last. I mean, whatever you call them, it doesn't matter. <coughs> if you just have like, yeah, match five dot match seven dot whatever. Like it just it gets really messy and unreadable. Yeah, I mean, it's like if you imagine if you just named all your variables with numbers, right? It would suck. Um, 
So this is very useful for readability and also to avoid introducing bugs. Because typically in a long pattern, if you change it later and you add something, like you add a new group somewhere, it changes all the numbers that follow. So that, that's really a good way to introduce a bug if you're not careful. So with the, with the names, it doesn't matter because the name is you know, still the same name, no matter what it is. Um, <coughs> so you have to watch out with that donations that the first one uh, that matches, it will just stop matching, right? So it, here it matches Bob and then it stops. So that's not great. Uh, if you swap them, you match everything, like you match the longer first. Um, and another option is to use an optional uh, sub pattern. And in this case, we just match Bob with an optional Y, uh, like uh, optional by at the end. Um, now here you have this uh, question mark colon there. That just means this sub pattern should not match. So it's, it's just a grouping of characters because you can't, you can't apply the question mark to, to both characters if they're not in a sub pattern, right? You need this group to say all of that is optional. But you don't necessarily want to match it because you don't care about this particular thing. You just want to match the whole thing. And so the, the question mark column there just makes it not create a match group. So it doesn't add this, like if you add it in the beginning, you don't create, like you don't offset all the numbers of the, of the sub patterns. Um, <coughs> then like the, the main reason to use regular expressions really is to match stuff that changes, right? Like if you want to match something that's static, you can just have a, like equal equal this this static thing. So you have usually uncertainty and there are a few quantifiers that let you express uh, this, this uncertainty. So the, the question mark is just saying, okay, it's optional, but it's zero to one time. Okay. <laughs> Was that better or not? Because no. No? Okay. <laughs> um, so the, the, the star or the wild card means just between zero and infinity of times. The plus is at least once, but up to infinity. And then if you want more granularity, you can use the, the curly braces to say, okay, between three and five times or stuff like that. So just some real quick examples. Here we have like Jamaicans, but maybe we want to match either Jamaican or Jamaicans. So optional S. But again, oops. Um, again, the the question mark here only applies to the S, right? It doesn't apply to the whole thing because we don't have the parentheses. Um, yeah, there's like <coughs> it can be like no O or two O's, doesn't matter. Um, and here same same thing, but we need at least one O. And then this one is a bit more interesting. Um, so we match a pair of A's, either once or twice. So we see that the first one, it had a pair of A's twice, so it matched it twice, and then it created another one with four again. And then here it can match a pair of A's, but then there's no second pair of A's, so it stops there and it only gets one. Then we can like make these lazy, because by default they're greedy, they just try to capture, like, to, to repeat as many times as possible and as, as many times as they are allowed to. But um, if we turn this one into a lazy quantifier, so we add a question mark. So in this case, the question mark doesn't mean, like, zero or once. It just means the thing that's before should now be lazy instead of greedy. So in this case, you see they just match these pairs, like single pairs, because as soon as it matches something, it just stops. It's like, okay, that's enough. So it just flips the, the behavior. Um, and this is like typically useful when doing like smart things like matching HTML. Uh, like, you know, if you have something that you match and it's, it's like not, uh, I mean, here you, you clearly see, like we match anything until there is a slash EM. But by default, it's greedy, so it matches everything until the last slash em, which is not what you want. 
So by adding the question mark, you just say, okay, like match as little as possible until there is a slash E I'm following. So it will just match the L and say, okay, I'm down here. And it checks, I oh, know there's no slash EM yet. So it matches the A and it checks, no slash, uh, no slash EM and so on. So it, it goes slowly while looking if there is something that matches. <coughs> um, and then the, the opposite of the lazy or greedy or like the, the ultra greedy thing is to say possessive can quantify us. Um, so this says like match as much as you can, but never give up the matches. So uh, for example, in, in this case here, it matches like at, at first it, it's going to match everything because you say dot plus, so it matches everything. And then it, it doesn't find a slash em after, so it, it starts to like roll back and like give up some, some characters until <coughs> it can match the slash em afterwards. But with the with the positive quantifier, you say, okay, that's not possible. Like if you once you match something, you don't go, go back. It's like either you match everything or you give up. Uh, so this is interesting mainly for performance reasons, and I'll explain that later. But just just as a quick example. Um, so here we have like two G's and three G's, and we match a G with the plus, so that means like one or more G's, followed by another G, right? Now if we add a plus to it, so we make the, the plus uh, possessive, it doesn't match anything anymore. And the reason is just that in both cases, the first G, it will capture all of them, and since it can't give give them back up, like at, at this point, it's here it matched two, and then um, it looks for another G following that, right? And there's no other G following, so it just fails. It doesn't like give one back so that the other one can match it. I hope that's clear, but uh, I'll get back with an example afterwards. <coughs> um, then anchors let you kind of just say that this pattern should match only at the beginning of the string or only at the end of the string with the caret or the dollar sign. Um, so if we if we have this uh, like sort of email matching pattern, it's not quite correct, but anyway, um, just an example. Um, and we say, okay, so the, we have the beginning and then we have some email address and then the end. So with the M modifier, you match multi-lines. So the, the beginning and the end mean beginning and end of the line. So if you have like this string with new line and some email address, another line, email address, those match just fine. Uh, the problem though is like by default, the dollar, it just, it means at the end of the string or before a new line, like before the final new line. So by default, this is a match. And not a lot of people know that, and I think it's a bit dangerous because like you might just validate things that have a trailing new line and maybe like this validates and it's fine, but then if you match it against something you had before that did not have a new line, it doesn't match anymore. Like you know, if you imagine a login thing or something like that, it could be like it could end up in, in pretty weird or bad situations. So there's a way around it and is to use this uh, backslash capital A and backslash Z instead of the caret and the dollar. And these just mean like really absolute beginning of the string and absolute end of the string. No like weird rules with eh, if there's a new line at the end it's okay. So this one really like only matches that and if there is a new line it does not match it. So that might be uh, worth considering for validation. <coughs> Um, then, like back references allow you to do interesting things. Like for example, here, if we want to like match all the strings with either single or double quotes, like this is a very like simple, naive way to do it, and it kind of works. But then we match also those strings with the single quote and double quote, which is not like it's not something you want to match because it's not valid. Um, so uh, an easy way to fix that is to match the first quote. And then we use this backslash one to, to do a back reference to it. So we say, at this point, we want to have the same thing that matched in the sub pattern one. 
So it's not copying the sub pattern, like it doesn't copy that, otherwise we would have the same problem. But it just says really I want the same content that was matched by that pattern. And again, you can use them with named, uh, named sub patterns, which I think is a good idea. Um, because it's, yeah, it's just like, I mean, here it's simple, but if you have multiple, like a, a larger regex, you probably want to name them and use the, so you can use this to, to reference to a name instead of the, just the number. <coughs> then we get to look ahead and look behind. Like, this is a bit more interesting. Um, so if you want to match like all the worlds that have stars around them, again, like naive approach, you say, okay, we have some star, and then we have some world characters, and then another star, and it, it, it you know, it works. But um, it's yeah, I don't like it too much because it matches the stars, and I would rather just match the world that is surrounded, but not the star itself. So for that, we can use look ahead and look behind, and say, okay. I want, like, I want those world characters. That's really all I want to match. But then this says, look, look behind with the, with the angle bracket. It says, like, look behind and make sure that there is a star behind it. And this says, look ahead and make sure there's a star as well. But these, these look ahead and look behind assertions, they're just looking at it and making sure that this is true but they don't match it, so it's a bit different. Um, so really what happens is it, it checks here, and it checks this I, and it's like, okay, that's the world character, but before, there is no, there is no star. So it, it skips it, and it keeps moving on, and like, there's no star ever before until it gets to the K, and oh yeah, there's a star before, so now I start matching, and it matches all the world characters until there's a star after, and then it stops. So this works well. Um, but on the other hand, if you want to do the opposite and like match everything that does not have stars around it, so we can use like those negative uh, assertions. So we just replace the equal by the, the not, uh, like the exclamation mark. So we say, okay, I want to match world characters without that. Problem here, you might spot it. Uh, we match things that are like not full world, right? Uh, we match in the in the middle there just because, well, between like uh, when it's matching the E, <coughs> like this is not a star, so it's okay, right? It matches. There is no star before it, so it's fine. And there is no star after it because the P is not a star, so it just matches this like middle of the world, which kind of sucks. Um, so there is a simple way to fix that using the, the backslash B, which just means, like, it's an alias again for, like, world, like, a, a boundary of a world. So if you look at that, uh, it's a bit, like, hard to see because it's, it's like capital W and small w or small w followed by capital W. So it just says, like, there is a world character on one side and no world character on the other side, all the other way around. So that's all it says, really, but it's just, so, so the backslash B, again, it does not match anything. It's just saying before is something, after is something else. That's, it just defines this boundary. So if we add that around the whole pattern we had, suddenly it works because when it's matching here the E and it says, okay, there's no star before, but then we're not at the boundary of a world because we have a world character on both sides of the, of the, the point we're at. So that fixes it. Um, <coughs> then we have conditionals that you should not use, I think. Because <laughs> they are kind of crazy. Um, I mean, it basically just lets you do if else, like kind of saying, okay, if this back reference matched, then take the, like use this as a pattern, otherwise use the no pattern. And it's, it's nice for some cases, it's nice, but I don't want to go into it too much because in general, if you're using regexes within PHP or JavaScript or something like some programming language, it's usually better to just say, okay, did I match something? Yes, then I will just do another regex call and, and do another match, you know. 
you split it up in, into more patterns. It's, it's like usually it doesn't hurt you. So if you can split it, then rather split it and do the do the if logic in the in the code because you know how to do that, and you won't create like a monstrosity. Um, yeah, but if you really want, it's there. <coughs> And finally, you have delimiters. So the delimiters, uh, as you know, like you usually have the slashes. Like in JavaScript, it's the only way it's to, you need those slashes around the pattern. And the reason they're there is to, to have modifiers at the end. Um, but I think the slashes kind of suck, because in web stuff, we do a lot of matching URLs. Like it's, it's a fairly common thing to do. And URLs are full of slashes, and that means you have to escape them all, and yeah, you end up with stuff like this, which is really not pretty. Um, so one trick you can do, if you're like not in JavaScript, but in PHP, you can use curly braces, for example. And I think they, they read a lot nicer because you don't have to escape them. Well, I mean, you anyway have to escape them because they're kind of, they're a meta character. So you know, if you if you want one in the middle, you kind of need to escape it, but uh, like how often do you match a curly brace anyway? It's pretty rare, so you can do that. You can use parentheses as well, or any any other character really, but I tend to default to that. Um, and another trick, like please use single quotes for regexes, like <laughs> for the patterns, because already with single quotes, if you want to match a backslash, you need four of them. So if you add like double quotes to the story and then you need to escape a bunch more stuff, it's, it gets really hard to see. So, uh, yeah. Just. So after the pattern, uh, after the delimiters, as I said, you have modifiers. Um, yeah, you can like switch to case insensitive or the multi-line explain, the, the dot all or single line thing uh, with the S. Again, like it's not available in JavaScript, so you can't really do that everywhere. Uh, U is for Unicode, so you need that to enable the, the Unicode escape characters and so on. Um, so that's all like the for the Unicode um, character class shortcuts and stuff. Um, then you have the capital D, which says dollar end only, which kind of turns the dollar into the same thing that it's mm -hmm. really only at the end. Um, so it, it, if you use that, the dollar becomes equal to the, to the backslash z at the end. So um, that's another way to do it if you rather keep using the dollar. And then you have the x, which allows you to add like white space, which is very nice, I think. Um, and it's nice for readability. So let's say, I mean, in general, you can have comments like that, right? Um, but adding a comment in line in like a, in a long regex, it doesn't really help, let's be honest. Uh, it just makes it longer. Um, so for example here, like, I don't know who can tell me what this is, for example, but I sure can't. Uh, I mean, you have to be pretty crazy to know all the Unicode escape characters. Uh, so if we want to document this and explain it, we can expand it. With the X, we can expand it. And then we can say, okay, like this, we're matching so something, and then then here we match a space. So the space is like, that's the only thing that's weird. If you if you turn on X, um, then you can have like, the spaces don't mean anything anymore. So if you want to match an actual space, you need to escape it, and so it becomes a real space. That's the only catch. Um, and then, yeah, now we can clearly explain that this is a pile of full characters. So that's, now it's a lot more readable. And, yeah. <laughs> like, I think that's, that's really, like, if, if you have long patterns, that's a good way to, to clarify them. And just as an example, we have a very long one here. It's page one, it's page two. Um, but you see, like, all this, for example, is just a comment, right? long comment and then we have a bunch of conditionals and stuff you shouldn't do but <laughs> uh, yeah it works um. <coughs> okay let's dive into engines a bit so uh, engines I mentioned the first match wins so be careful if you 
And if you have things that conflict, put the longer one before, or like the most specific first. <coughs> uh, on the other hand, like if if there is no overall match, it's gonna give up the match and, and try again, right? So it, it prefers to match the whole string or the whole pattern than to just match a little piece of it. So in this case, it, it first match is uh, set. So, I mean, if you look at the, like this is a debugger view of the of what the engine does. And so here we see it enters the sub pattern and match is set. And it, like, so on the left you have the pattern, on the right you have the, the, the subject. Um, so it matches set, and then it's it's over here. So it jumps to the end and it tries to match bar, but it can't because there's no bar following set. And so it says, okay, I am gonna backtrack. And backtrack just means it jumps back in the in the pattern somewhere. Um, so it jumps back here to try the other branch, and then it's, it matches again. And when it when it backtracks, in this case, it also like dropped the entire match that it had, right? Because it gives up on this thing and it tries the other one. So now we match set foo and then it keeps going to bar and it matches and success. Um, <coughs> now it's backtracking like so again if we take this this email thing, we have one that matches here and one that doesn't. Okay? Um, so you see there is the dot foo dot here, so it's not a complete domain, so it's not valid. And like that's just the, the, the flow of the pattern. Um, so we have like anything that's not an add, then we have an add sign and some like main domain bit, and then some subdomains or like some just every time a dot and then some other part of the domain. And this whole thing can be done multiple times. So like as in the, in the example here, .co.uk is a typical thing where you need to match more than just like foo.bar. So again, if we look at the, the successful match, it's pretty simple. It just goes, I mean, it goes all the way there. That's fine. Um, and it, it tries this, this sub pattern here and it matches the first bar. Um, well, no, sorry, then it enters that. Then you have like the .co that gets matched. And this is like this. And then it, it gets to the end and it checks, okay, now are we at the end of the string? No. Okay, then I backtrack, go back to, to it, try to match this again. Now we match the dot UK. And then it backtracks again. Just to, I mean, there's the plus, so it, it has to try as many times as it can. Um, so it, it tries again, but there's no dot, so it just, okay. <coughs> no, no more thing to match here, so it jumps at the end. Uh, it checks that there, the, there is the end of the string and it matches, so success. Fine. Now, with the with the case where it doesn't match, uh, so the invalid domain, you see that we have like, I mean, this is red for a reason. <laughs> it's not a good thing. Like some backtracking. Like in this case, you know, we have backtracking, but it's okay. Like it's it's fine to have some of it because it's just a feature of the engine and it, it's needed for some things. But when you see stuff like that, like this is not a healthy backtrack pattern. It's like a, it's more the, the pathological mode. And the reason is, uh, so I'll just jump to the end here, where it, it matched everything, and then it tries to match here. So it, it says, okay, I have a dot, yeah, that matches, but then it, there's no nothing else behind, so okay, that doesn't match. So it it will start dropping characters one by one. It just it, it gives up on the O. I don't see like I don't know if you see that it's not highlighted here anymore. But the the last O it has been given up. So it just drops one character and it checks if it passes now. So it just say, okay, okay maybe that one wasn't needed. So I'm just dropping it and it just goes to to the end and try again. Are we at the end of the string now? No, nope, still not. Okay, so let's just drop one more O and see if we're at the end of the string now. No, nope, okay. And it just like drops everything it matched one by one like that, always checking if maybe this way it's gonna work. Um, so now here you have like you know 20 of them or something, not too bad. But if you are matching something that's like two megabytes of text, and you have a dot plus in the middle that just matched everything, and then slowly like dropping characters one by one, <coughs> then you have you know, a few millions of those backtracks before it gives up or before it matches something else. Um, so that's 
one of the cases where you get a failure, actually, like instead of just no match, sometimes it's gonna error out and tell you like error maximum, like backtrack limit exceeded or something. And this backtrack limit is pretty high; it's in the millions. But if you have like really big, big uh, subject strings, it's pretty easy to like, like to explode it with a bad pattern. <coughs> so what can we do? We can use those possessive quantifiers, right? Well, everyone got what the possessive quantifiers do. Um, so, like, the difference is really we just added a plus here. So instead of one plus, we have two pluses. So we say, once you match something in the in the subdomain, like in the domain part, you don't give it up. Like, either you match it all, or you give up on the whole thing. But you don't try try to drop character by character. So we still have the, the problem that it doesn't match, of course, because it's still invalid. But you see that here, instead of dropping character by character, it drops the whole thing at once, like the whole dot .foo, and then dot .uk, and then like, so it just drops things a lot faster. And it goes back like a lot faster, so you don't like, we went from 32 steps to 20 steps. But if we had like a two megabyte email address, <laughs> We would go from like two million steps to still like twenty steps because it's like this one will always do it all at once, while the other one just goes like bit by bit. <coughs> Is that clear for everyone? Yeah, cool. Okay, uh, some sample use cases quickly. Um, I mean, it's just like stuff I, I use day to day. I think if you're familiar, like if you get familiar with it, it's it's easy to use like regexes for very small things on a day to day basis. And that also keeps you up to date, like keeps you sharp with your skills, and so you don't you don't forget. Um, I mean, that's a simple thing. Like if you want to match any call that has an argument test, like that's not something that your IDE can let you do, right? Like you can find all the usages of a function, but you can't find usages with this argument. So that's one case where you might want to use a regex. Obviously, it's going to match a bunch of stuff that is not valid. Like, it's this is not like the smartest way to do it, but it doesn't matter. It's like, you know, it's all about investment and like what you get out of it, really. It's, if you say, okay, I match this, I, I might find a few like false positives, but at least, you know, I get on with my day and I got stuff done. Um, yeah, similarly, if you if you have like if you want to call a setter, like find all the setters on some object. Like again, this is you know if you if you match that there is something called foo, it's obviously someone can create an instance of foo and call it something else. Like there's no like this is not science, <laughs> but but if you're consistent, you know you can find most usages like that. Just if you name stuff all the time the same and so on you get other benefits. Um, stripping things, like that's also something that I think is, is very simple. Like if you want to stru like, uh, remove a prefix or remove like trailing white space or stuff like that. Um, you know, if, like this for example, you could easily check and do like a if string pause, uh, like string pause of, you know, like if you match it at the, the beginning of the string, then like I'll take the substring and remove the first four characters, na na na. It's easy to do, but like to me, it's more cognitive load, like to have those few lines of blah blah blah, than this very simple regex. Which I mean, I guess everyone gets that. It's it's very very simple, and it does the job. Like if this if the prefix is there, it, it removes it. If it's not there, it doesn't do anything. Simple. Um, yeah. Then this I won't go in details, but. Um, it's just a way to highlight. Like this is from the from the composer class map scanner thing. So that's like that's an interesting problem. We have to find all the class names in all the files. How do you do that? Like the first approach we took was token get all. Like if you don't know that, it's just like you you get all the tokens from the file. So PHP passes the file and gets you a big ass array with all the parts of the file tokenized. And then you can iterate through that and find the class token and then get the name afterwards. Cool. But this, on large files, it takes forever. Like it, because you have to loop through all of them. On very, very large files, it just blows up the memory limit because 
it creates a million tokens. So this did not work out very very long for us, and we had to go to this uh, to this regular expression approach, which you know, like in the beginning, if you think, okay, how do you match a class in a in a PHP file, like again, early approach, you say, okay, let's just match like class and some name, and quickly you find out that you have problems because someone has a comment where they just write in this class blah blah blah, and then you match this in the comment, and obviously that's not really the class name or you have a string somewhere or whatever. So what we do is we control the environment. Like first, we just uh, we remove all the strings, all the here docs, all the comments, because these are like easy to match with regexes. And we can, like, we just remove all the unknowns. And at the end, we have something that's just like pure PHP code, where there's no, like, no nonsense that can be into it. And then we can match class something fairly safely because there's no way that, you know, you can't have, a, if you have a class variable, it's going to have a dollar in front of it and so on. So we just reduce the, the problem space to down to something where we can use regexes safely. And this actually runs a ton faster than the token get all thing. So it's win-win. <coughs> uh, just a way to split stuff. Like if you want to split text, for example, you know, here you have either a space or a comma. I think that's nice you don't know what users are going to send you, so, you know, just, like, you can think of many small use cases. Uh, if you use grep, like, please use this uh, dash dash extended regexp, or the dash capital E, I think, is the short version. Because if you don't, you're in POSIX regular expression mode, and this is, like, totally not useful. <laughs> Because like the, the POSIX standards just defines that by default nothing is a meta character, and if you want something to be a meta character, you have to escape it. So it's like the completely opposite of what you're used to in all the programming languages. I don't know why they did this, but it's very not helpful. Um, so like if you have a, a parenthesis and you want to create a match group, for example, you have to escape them so that they have meaning. So it's, it's useless. With the E, it just goes back to like normal mode like everywhere else so definitely worth it um and yeah finally a quick question here like do you think it dismatches or not like, i'll give you 10 seconds <laughs> to think about it <laughs> so who thinks it matches? A few timid hands. <laughs> who thinks or who knows it doesn't match it? <laughs> like you know for sure, and you can explain why. Or you're just trying to be lucky. Yeah. <laughs> okay, so it does not match. Um, because this is a look ahead. And I tried to hammer this a few times, but I'm not sure if, uh, if you got it. It does not match. It's just looking ahead. So really, like it just, I mean, this one matches, but it only matches the queue, right? It does not match the U, it just matches that there's a queue followed by a U. So in this case, it matches, okay, there's a queue, it's followed by a U, yes, so we match the queue, and then it tries to match an I. And after the queue is not an I, it's a U, so it doesn't match. Now, you all got it, I hope? Uh, but that, like this is very important because look aheads are very like they're very useful in some cases, but it's really weird that like you have to think about this engine having two heads that like move a different like you know you have the pattern head and the, the the match head and they move independently and like having a su successful look ahead does not move the the match it's just different things. <coughs> Okay, so now that you know all about everything, uh, <laughs> how do you remain sane and not like misuse this stuff? Um, like my approach would be to just try and use regexes because I like them and I'm fairly familiar with them. Um, but yeah, you, at some point you have to realize when you can't use them anymore and so 
I think that the only way to do that is like there's no magic rule of you know for this use case you cannot use it like everyone likes to say for HTML don't use regexes. Yeah, in general it's true. Like if you can't control which HTML you get, you probably shouldn't use regexes because it's gonna be crazy. But I think it's all about the domain the domain variance and and if you know that you only get this like sanitized HTML where you have exactly only this and that possible thing, then it's okay to match it. Like if you know the constraints, it's okay. Um, now when you match stuff, I would say like start small, like avoid this dot plus because either you're gonna have like issues with backtracking or just always matches everything and then rolls back and so this makes your, your patterns very slow. Or uh, the other issue is you will just match stuff that you shouldn't match and then you have like, I think having false positives is very bad because you, you have like unknown, unknown behavior. If you if you are very strict about what you match then at least you don't get surprises. You just might like, you know, not do the full job yet but at least when you see it fails you see okay now let's just extend that a bit and start matching more and more, but going the other way is a bit difficult. And um, yeah, with boundaries, just remember, like if if you try to do uh, like matching somewhere in the middle of a string, probably this backslash b thing for the world world boundary is pretty useful because you you want to make sure you match like something that's independent. I mean, usually, um, and if you're doing validation, like at least use this to, to make sure you don't have like like matching an email like if you validate that there is an email in this like two megabytes of text I just got you're not validating much right um, so you really want the anchors to say okay I validate that this is an email not just contains an email <coughs> and finally like please document and just you know use these sub-pattern names to, to make sure it's readable. Um, and yeah, like use the X modifier as well to, to explode them into uh, more readable things. So I hope that, yeah, that you all learned something, uh, even the experts here in front. Um, <laughs> I, yeah, I just hope that by, by knowing more about it, you can be a bit more confident and just like not worry too much about them. <coughs> um, so yeah, that's it, thank you. Three links, don't need to care about them, but one more link joined in, that's like nice for feedback, and that's the link where you can find the slides, where you can find the other links. Uh, <laughs> so just remember this link. <laughs> um, and if you have questions, like, I'll be around, but there's the other talk starting now, so I don't want to block anyone from going there if you want to go attend. Uh, so thank you. And, yeah. <laughs>